Hello, John. Hello, Anna. There was a recent article there about Dohi O'Shea. Dohi O'Shea says he prays every night and has done so for 40 years. He also says that when he passes churches, he lights candles for people, which is a nice thing. A candle is a symbol of light. Um, a candle is also an extension of prayer. Um, it's nice when you see somebody in the media coming out saying that, you know, that they're, they adhere to a higher power, you know, a religious uh, power. And that's uh, it's, it's, it's quite welcoming because you don't see it very often. Well, you don't see it at all. So this is nearly a first. And uh, Dati O'Shea, or, uh, yeah, Dati O'Shea Dohi. has been on. The, huh? Dohi Dati, O'Shea. Dati O'Shea. Not, not Dotty. Yeah. Do, Dohi. Do, do, Dotty. O'Shea, okay. and he's been on the on the um, radio, television, TV for many years on a a program called Today, and he's been quite good. I saw him years ago, and uh, there would be somebody with him, and it was a very kind of a jolly sort of affair, and it, I thought it was very good, and and I'm not surprised uh, when he uh, indicated that from the time he made his first Holy Communion. At seven or eight years of age, he's been practicing his Catholic faith ever since, and uh, and saying prayers, etc. And uh, he indicated, um, which we are probably get, uh, um, you know, somebody uh, <clears throat> criticizing him or that type of thing. And he visited the church and did a candle for that person to perhaps repent. And this is the best way to do it. And I'm not surprised I enjoyed this program and the sort of the way it was done. Uh, because uh, the person that's um, presenting the program um, often has a difficult enough job to do. And they can take it too serious in the secular sense and about how popular and all the rest of it. But I think that he didn't seem to suffer from that. And uh, he he was um, a Gaelic uh, speaker as well, which is why he has his name the way he has it. And uh, an indication of his pride in his Irish heritage. He's from Kerry, of course, which produced such great people, not least Daniel O'Connor, the great liberator, and Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty, the, the, the Vatican Pimpernel that saved over 5,000 people, including a lot of Jewish people, and prisoners of war that had escaped, and uh, on which their lives were hanging on a thread if they were found. And uh, they were all sheltered in different parts. Marvellous how what he did. And a film made about it by Gregory Peck called the, the, the Vatican Pimpernel about... Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty, who has a statue now to whom he was from Killarney. So you were talking you about are. the you're talking about the Scarlet Pimpernel there, you were. Yeah. That's right, the Scarlet yeah. Pimpernel, marvelous film. Well worth looking at if one can get it on the internet or the, the Google or whatever, not Google, YouTube or whatever you can get. Uh now uh Dotty. Uh, so he's uh, come out uh, in an interview with a lady, Sarah and a very good Catholic individual. And uh, he shared uh, his, his faith with her. And uh, it's a breath of fresh air coming from uh, the, tele, the uh, radio, television and the television end of it and the radio, because very few seem to have, uh, if they were ever baptised, I presume they were and made or sort of they seem to have turned their back on that great heritage of the Catholic faith. But that he hasn't. And uh, more power to his elbow. And I hope it gives other ones uh, that perhaps need to repent and return to the practice of Catholic faith to save their immortal souls. And uh, it's great to see what he did. It will have a good effect, I would think, uh, with certain ones, probably no. But you pray for your enemies. Well, that's it. As, that's as, as, as you say, there, uh, great that he did it. But he's been doing it for forty years. He's been doing it. He says since he's uh, since his holy communion. Correct. 
and he visits churches and lights candles, uh, the light, as you rightly say, the light of the world, which is what the Catholic faith is. And it's a great gift with our sacraments of confession and Holy Communion and the consecration uh, that Jesus gave the way to tune the life and, of course, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, which, as you know, I've been doing on my live video starting off at Matthew, only a paragraph or two. And quite frankly, uh, it's enough for to med you know try to meditate on because there's a great deal of information in it, and also there's often items that can cause a bit of confusion even to anybody, especially a lay person, and uh, it's the best way to do it. And um, as a lay person, we're all disciples, and uh, because of perhaps the lack of vocation to the holy pri priesthood and the religious life, uh, it comes down to the lay people, the laity, and even Archbishop, Venerable Archbishop Fulton John Sheen, that great broadcaster, uh, mentioned that the laity would be the saviour of the Catholic faith, and they are, because they're standing up for for uh, the, the, the Catholic faith, and by the way, standing up for the marvellous universal language of Latin in the Catholic faith, with the priest facing the tabernacle and the reverence attached to it, and the fact that there's more vocations to that um, sect, section of the Catholic faith than, than, than anything else. And I think the modern priests that have been ordained have now more of a traditional view, uh, because that was the growth and that was marvellous uh, where churches was full and packed. And Dottie uh, must remember that when he was growing up in Kerry, because they would have been packed as well. Uh, but they changed a lot of things, and it, didn't turn out to be as successful as they thought it might be. It had the reverse effect. And Dotty has kept on the straight and narrow from that point of view, even though in the television he he, he could have a lot of temptations uh, because of the nature of what it is. So for to say he married a, a lady, I think, from the United States and have a ten year old child and who's going on very well. So he was, he was, um, he wasn't, he married in, I think, in his late 30s or perhaps early 40s or something like that. Uh, but uh, very happy and uh, and apparently uh, I think he must have a house that he developed in, in Galway and apparently it's in very good condition. It was a, an, old, an old cottage, but a great job done on it. Uh, there was something there on the website about it. So... I, I have to congratulate Dottie O'Shea and wish him the best of luck for the rest of his life. He's a great example of of uh, what the Catholic faith can do for you. Uh, when you turn your back on it, you don't have much luck, the more you way of thinking. And I think that... Um, they would change their tune also in that department. Yeah, Sometimes when I'm out yeah. walking by the sea, I do see a presenter. I'm not going to mention who it is, okay? It's a presenter on one of the TV stations. And this person, when you see them on the TV, they look as happy as could be. But when you see the reality, okay, when they're walking by the ocean, okay, um, you yeah. see a very, very different person. You see a person that's almost on the edge. It can must be very difficult for these presenters to actually go in front of uh, the entire country and they have to be like top notch every time and they have to put a smile on their face and it takes a great deal of confidence to do that. So it's nice to know that he can fall back on his religious faith and that that gives him strength, you know. That's the great strength. Uh, when you have that, you don't have the, the sort of down that ones that don't practice that, they can put it on for a certain period, but it nearly wears them out. And uh, they're um, because they haven't got the spiritual foundation that actually underpins that kind of thing. When you have that, you're able to do your job with with that gift, and you don't have this business of trying to be famous or this that. Or the, you're not suffering from that type of thing. You just do it uh, the way your ability allows you to do it, and uh, that that's what and that that's that's how you know when somebody is, is doing whatever they're doing, you can nearly spot. Uh, because uh, the one that has the bit of faith, there's a certain genuineness about what they're, what they're saying and that. You can spot it. Uh, I mean, I think I can. And with regard to Dottie, years ago, I thought he had something that was 
very good, at, we call it a talent. And another fellow that had that, and I think he had a good fate, was a lad called Brendan O'Reilly. Uh, there was a good singer as well. And uh, Brendan, and he was on the on the on the thing, but he he didn't get the uh, help and advancement that his talent warranted. But I still think he he had his Catholic faith, because I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times. I had a shop for a period of time in Turn Newer, and he used to come in uh, with his wife. I think it was his wife, and uh, they were very nice. And I think they used to look at it, what I call a dime bar because that's what they have in the US. And I got them in specially for Brendan O'Reilly. And with the name Brendan, that's as good a Catholic name as you could be, as you could have. You see, so I have a feeling he was that way, but he, he didn't get, he had talent, very good talent and into sports as well. And great talent as an entertainer, but he, he, he didn't get any support from from the post that be you know what i mean he he was um sidelined and another fellow that had great talent uh was um uh a fellow that used to do the sports on bbc uh got his name just him unfortunately just, just if i know him i can picture him and uh he was headhunted and uh he was very talented uh, but then he must have fallen foul with whoever was running the place because he had a great faith as well. Liam Nolan. And there he came to me. Liam Nolan. Marvellous person. And uh, they put him on a programme and then they changed it to another thing and then they gave him a night programme. But even then he made a great success of it. He had listeners and he, he had a kind of a spiritual way of going on that attracted people and uh, there was there was he, he had a, a big audience and he had prayer time and all the rest of it and funny enough years ago and the radio they used to have prayer time and a fellow called McCarthy that owned the embankment he was from Kerry it used to be about for three minutes but that was a very enlightening um, episode and I don't know why they stopped it so we're talking about that uh, there was there was a good element years ago in the radio disappeared then over the years on the television and then likewise on the radio. So Dottie is an exception. Uh, Liam Nolan was, was marvellous and uh, and uh, very talented, uh, but he didn't get the proper opportunities that he was entitled to, considering there, that he was headhunted. There is one person you... Very... There is one yeah, person... Go ahead. There is one person you have forgotten, John Malone, a very, very important, legendary broadcaster who was very, very comfortable in his own skin. And I think you know who I'm talking about. I do. Who? You're talking about um, um, that um, hallelujah man, is it? No, Gay Bourne. Gay oh, Bourne. Gay Bourne, yes. I have to say, Gay Bourne is the only presenter I have ever seen on Irish television who was completely and utterly comfortable in every situation you could put him in. He had a, he, he was just Correct. born for it. That's right. And uh, well, he was good. And uh, he he was able to, um, the audience and uh, the rest of it was always, it was always a very pleasant uh, experience. And I heard him first, by the way, going back a bit, <clears throat> uh, Harry Tullier, and your man that used to do the sports, Jimmy McGee, uh, they had a um, kind of an organisation, and uh, they used to produce programs for that, for the program for the, uh, the program they used to go out like Prescotts, these uh, commercial programs that they had to sort of uh, at the middle of the day, and uh, a gay born was uh, got his first chance with 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 Jimmy McGee and Harry Tullier uh, and the Prescott program and he used when they were opening uh, show uh, uh, premises uh, it to be all the, uh, the older folks there and he seemed to get on very well with them it was a very jolly experience uh, and, and and I said to myself that fella has talent and then he then eventually he got a job in RTE and uh, a thing that I don't think people know about his contract for years, even when he was on the Late Late Show, 
and he had a radio program that was good as well. He 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 only had a three months contract, sure. renewed every three months, and they gave other individuals, including Frank Hall and some other ones, the chance to do the late late show, but they made a made the bags of it. So they had to have 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 um gay born and they they gay born then got a bit of power and he was able to produce the programs himself and be in them. So he had talent and he had ability, which is good. And his father, his father worked in Guinnesses, I think. And he had a brother, L Lar, I think, or Jer or whatever he was. And he was into something. I think he interviewed him once or twice, but Gay, Gay had that great ability, and um, and uh, he went to the CBS in Sing Street. He just leave it, but I don't think he. I think the University of Life is what he, what he learned from. And by the way, he got a non doctor degree from I don't know whether it's Trinity or some other place. So he was doctor born. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, nice to wind up with an adulterous, uh, ornery title, but don't let her allow to use it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, John Malone. You know that. Absolutely, Thank I do. Um, I think you yeah. look, Dohi, fair play to him. He's come out as a um, uh, as a, a religious man that, Another you know, he might. Man, and man. the good thing about that is, like, like, there's so much going on in Ireland. There's so much poison about so many things. It's, the Correct. government is being pulled asunder, you know, every day of the week. And, you know, there's people on the streets protesting about everything. So it's nice when Dahi comes out and says, you know, he might inspire other people to really examine their lives, you know, and maybe go back to the church or Correct. get involved, right. you know. Right. And and get that peace and joy that it brings. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. Nothing else gives the same uh, peace and tranquility and joy. And uh, wherever you're at. Yeah. So it doesn't matter uh, because you're not taking yourself that serious. Your life is short and do the best you can at, in that area. And you, you, you're you you're happy. It doesn't matter what age you are. I'm in the winter time of my life. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still as active up here and in here as I ever was, maybe more so. John Malone, I can tell you that you're more alert than me. <laughs> And I'm a lot younger, okay? You have a better memory than me. You have better energy than me. <laughs> I don't know where you get it from, but it must be something to do with your religious faith. Yeah. Way, it's, it's, it's when you do that, you, you don't have any of this, but whatever you call it. As I say, I went in on the bus. Well, no, but, well, I got choked in by the bus, by the way. I always give them the compliment of that. And I said to the bus driver, I was... A lot getting off at a stop there, and and I got off, and and I, I and then I saw I didn't think it was a con street, so I knocked on the door. He opened the bus again. And I said, I thought that this might be a con street, but well, it's not a con street, is it? Oh no, Cable Street he says, and he didn't say any more. So I was, I was there then, and I thought, well, I stand, I won't sit down. I had a seat like, and. Uh, and then, as we come near a corner street, a lady, a youngish lady, must have heard the, what it was at. And she said, we're at a corner street now. <laughs> so it just shows you <laughs> what kind of head you get. And it was a good omen because I enjoyed my visit. Very good. Thank you very I much, John. And of course, I got come. Yeah, thanks very much, Oliver. Thanks, bye-bye.